Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Friday, uh, April 27th. We have some awesome stuff. Got it, my last Rooster Teeth unboxing for now. Uh, I might do an unboxing if it's a crate, if they do want a theme that I really like. Uh, got some comic book reviews. Also, I have for you a review for Avengers Infinity War. I'll do a non-spoiler review, say goodbye to people that want to exit out then, and then continue on with the spoilers. So, be fair warned. We don't have much for news-ish stuff, except for Bill Cosby being found guilty. Still not uh, seeing a lot of stuff that you, I didn't really know about him come to light too. Like, um, it, when I heard about that, I was watching that spinoff show, a different world. And it made me wonder what happened to the character that was from the Cosby show. So I looked it up and found out that the care, the actress that played Denise got pregnant during their first season. And she wanted to make the next season about her character Denise being a single woman from a privileged family, being uh, dealing w with motherhood and all that stuff, and raising a child. But Bill Cosby had other plans, and instead had her character drop out of college and move back to get married to have their baby. Then, so it wouldn't look like it was out of wedlock, because that's what she was doing in real life. Anyways, to move on to reviews, this is going to be kind of a short-ish show. Had a pretty long day. First, we have the end of Fast Times at Midtown High with Amazing Spider-Man number... Uh, 18. This is Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. This is set in a world where Peter and MJ uh, got married, had a daughter named Annie Mae, and this is set sort of in a f jump jumping point where Annie Mae is a uh, teen in high school. Peter is now teaching at her school. She's feeling very embarrassed. Uh, she recently made some new friends, but as she found out her new friends when they got superpowers temporarily went a little bit crazy with them one of them only wanted to use him to be a hero but uh, this girl who wanted to avenge her father's death who was killed thanks to Norman Osborn and she wanted to blame his grandson Normie for all of it and kill him she thought that would be avenging her father and it took Annie and her uh, other friend there to help convince her to stop. They lost their powers. They thought Annie got powers with them. So she's pretending to be powerless but being their friend to help monitor them too. Meanwhile, Peter and MJ are, are kind of being proud parents. They're happy that she handled the situation, that she is monitoring them. And she made some friends and discovered a passion where she's going to be in the drama club working all the stage stuff and being a technician. But they're a little disappointed that Annie didn't come to them first. And that's because Annie doesn't want to be in her parents' shadow anymore. She wants to be her own hero, her own teen. She's even thinking about changing her costume and getting rid of the Spiderling name. Which I think is understandable too because she's in high school. She needs a new identity and stuff. And it was really nice seeing her interactions with Normie. It's obvious he still has feelings for her, but he's trying to be a good guy. He's putting his best foot forward. But it revealed that one of his scientists was actually Mr. Sinister in disguise and is using Norm Normie Osborne's resources for his own evil intentions. And from what I've seen in the uh, future in July, they're going to be starting their own clone saga in uh, Renew Your Vows, where uh, Annie Mae will have to deal with her own evil clone, which should be interesting to see what happens. 
Now we got Venomized number three. This was really interesting. It had a lot of fun things that were happening. We got to see some new Venomized heroes. Uh, we got to see some new poisoned heroes. Like uh, they showed female Thor get consumed and become uh, poison. She can well as a poison. She couldn't wield Mjolnir because she was unworthy. But then shortly after, uh, Jane Foster's body fell out of uh, the poison and it collapsed and died because since Jane Foster no longer had her power, she was free to get out of there. And she grabbed the hammer and became female Thor again and rejoined the fight. And uh, Miss Marvel Kamala Khan got turned into a venomized version of herself and it looked pretty cool. I really liked the color pattern they went with. They went with black and this darkish green color. It looked really nice. And they also had Agent Anti-Venom step in and kick butt and the poisons now fear him because with one touch from him, they literally turn into a goop pile and die. But they were success successful in turning uh, Cassidy, who is Carnage, into a poison version of himself, and they're going to use him to combat age and anti-venom so it's unclear if that carnage was the carnage from uh venomized because it was revealed that that carnage was not the carnage that they had help from so who knows if they're going to call upon that carnage again or what will happen because the current carnage did not have their symbiote with them it had it was somewhere else or either destroyed so we might not see that one again who knows? It should be interesting to see what happens. And there's other little things here and there, like um, Jean Grey is still partially alive in her uh, poison eye, poison form, because every so often she keeps trying to send telepathic messages to Scott asking for help. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Issue 4 just came out this week, and next week will be the final issue, and I'll reveal review that in two weeks. Next week's show will reveal, review issue 4. And I hope you check it out. It's been a really awesome story. Next, we have a story arc that I'm really enjoying right now. It's called uh, The Shattered Grid. It's the Power Rangers storyline. And it's actually really fantastically dark. Like, they uh, just killed off uh, Tommy Oliver. He was my favorite. And evil Tommy has escaped. He's kidnapped uh, the Power Rangers samurai and took their samurizers and is using the skills that he learned from Ninjor to steal the samurai powers to fuse with his own and he's become sort of like a hybrid of the samurai rangers and himself. So it looks really neat and that's what he's going to be doing. His main plan is to go through different key time periods and steal rangers morphers, steal their energy and become one with them. But before he could get the female Red Ranger... Uh, I don't know where her bro twin brother is. He, for some reason, wasn't there. And I don't think they really showed the Gold Ranger, so it could mean that they will show up at some other t point in time. But um, she was rescued by the Power Rangers. They learned a little more about uh, Jen, the Time Force Ranger. Um, she was telling them how she lost everyone. Her uh, fiancé, Wes, who, if you haven't seen Time Force was the love interest and also the Red Ranger. It's interesting to see what will happen. Uh, I'll review uh, the next part of Shattered Grid, which is their annual that's coming that came out this week. I'll be reviewing it for next week's show when it comes in. But if you're not reading this, check it out. It is really awesome and surprisingly good for what it is. And you will have fun reading it. Next, we got Infinity Countdown 2. And what this is was showing different sides to different storylines. We saw uh, the female Nova give birth to her baby on a battlefield. We saw Groot kicking butt and taking names and uh, saving the day. We saw Drax um, acting like everything was going on was normal. Uh, we had Rip Rider, the Nova, meet reunite with his brother as they team up to fight the oncoming enemy so it looks like the uh, Darkhawks 
will be teaming up with the Nova Corps, which will be kind of cool. We saw more of uh, different things happening here and there. Uh, and they're trying to remember who has what stone. Like, um, right now, uh, Black Widow has the space stone because Logan dumped it last uh, book. So it's kind of interesting to see what will be going on. There's three more issues, and then also there's a couple of sub-issues before in July when Infinity War starts. Because all this stuff is just prelude leading up to the big shebang, which should be really entertaining and really fun to read. If you're not reading it, check it out. You will not be sorry. And finally, the last one, uh, I, comic book I have to review today is Miss Marvel number 29. Can you feel the love tonight? And this is when Miss Marvel has decided to turn into a teenage soap opera because there's a huge love triangle going on with Kamala, Bruno, and Red Dagger. Red Dagger has been working with her for a while. He came to America to be with Kamala and Miss Marvel because he's in love with them. He uh, ends up kissing her finally. But after they break apart, Kamala realizes Bruno's back and he saw them kiss. So she did the sensible thing and ran away because she doesn't know how to deal with those things. Even though she did de date... Um, evil teen Loki, uh, hipster Loki. She unfortunately does not know how to handle her emotions. And that was the first boy that she ever kissed. So she's freaking out. Bruno comes back. They introduce a new character that's hinted that she might be like this next supervillain. She's got crazy super strength. She's really, uh, bitchy to people. And Bruno's learning things that, what has changed he learned that zoe was a lesbian and uh she joked about how she's no longer vegan saying that was just a phase <laughs> which was funny and they had a little moment where zoe uh kind of thought the new girl was cute and nakia who was zoe's ex crush uh nakia shot zoe down because she just said she couldn't because of her faith but it kind of hints that Nikki is in love with Zoe. It's just she doesn't know how to come about it. But she's also like, no, do not fall in love with the evil girl. She Zoe made a move anyways and got crushed, but it looked kind of weird. Like she liked being denied. Who knows what will happen with there. Um, Kamala talks more with Bruno, has another panic session, runs away, doesn't know really to run until she... Uh, talks um i forget his name uh her uh person of faith and uh he gives her advice saying that he's taught her how all these different rules and morals but he never taught her how to follow her feelings and that's what he was trying to do help her guide her through him he was a little surprised that she had already kissed a boy but he was okay with it and he wanted to be understanding because he could see how upset and hurt she was that she didn't know what to do and he was basically telling her, choose the person that's being, that makes you more happy. And next month's issue, we'll see more of this storyline. And then in June, we'll get a one-off slumber party. And then in July, we'll get the Miss Marvel fresh start, where they're going to be starting with a new storyline, which should be interesting. I kind of get the feeling like the new character that's been introduced is somehow connected to... Uh, basic Becky who was for the longest time is Kamala's arch nemesis she constantly just keeps showing up to ruin Kamala's day and blames Kamala for all these problems but basically she's just envious of not having superpowers but uh, it quickly turned into like a racist thing where she didn't like her for being an inhuman she didn't like her for being a Muslim and all this other stuff It'll be interesting to see if she has any connections to basic Becky. Alright, opening up the 
RT box. Let's see. Got another achievement hunter collectible minifigure. Does not say who it's supposed to be. And it is a silver. I got a uh, silver jack. Before I got the golden gust, now I got the silver jack. <laughs> Which is funny. Uh. I got an. Um, I'm guessing a rooster teeth plate. Not 100% sure. Let me check. This is this box is to help celebrate their 15th anniversary, which was this month. Uh, rooster teeth has been around for 15 years, bringing you all sorts of goodness. Got another candle, and it looks like it's Bernie Burns's face on it. Yeah, it is Bernie Burns, officially licensed Bernie Burns urinal cake candle. Now this is a big joke to uh, back in, when they first were going to introduce the RT boxes. Uh, they joked about giving out Bernie Burns urinal cakes, and now there's a urinal cake candle, which is funny. Got a uh, Rooster Teeth energy drink. And it opens up. Yeah, it's just a container. That's kind of cool. You can probably put like your own beverage in it or uh, use it for storage. I'd probably use it for storage and not actually put uh, any liquids in it because it looks like they'd probably fall out of this thing pretty easy. It's still a little cool little thing. Uh, here, I'll show it again. See? And got a friggin' 15 button from Rooster Teeth. Celebrating their 15 years. And last but not least, we got a uh, Rooster Teeth uh, 15th year anniversary. And on the back it says, Do you wonder why we're still freaking here? Or still here. Do you ever wonder why we're still here? Which is kind of interesting and stuff I for one am happy Rooster Teeth exists they had a lot of fun shows they created some of the more entertaining internet series like Red vs. Blue, Ruby Nomad of Nowhere and they have a lot more promising things coming out down the pipeline which I look forward to watching and possibly even reviewing uh. All right, just got to readjust this. Now uh, we have Avengers Infinity War. And I'll start off with, like I said, a non-spoiler review. It's so far the best 
Marvel movie, in my opinion. Outdoing Black Panther by just a few margins here and there. Just about what it was. And as I was sitting there, I realized something. Wow. This is no longer... Uh, Kevin Smith no longer has the reins on the ex- most expensive inside joke movie ever. Because literally, you can watch this movie without knowing the other Marvel movies and still find it enjoying. But without all the other Marvel mo- movies, the 10 years of movies, there's a lot of references here and there that you won't get or you won't feel the way you feel when you see characters die or when they're about to die or when they're doing something funny or when they're about to do something. You're like, okay, th- these are things that are happening. People around me are laughing. I'm going to laugh too. Like they had a lot of funny scenes with uh, Thor interacting with Rocket Raccoon and he kept calling him a rabbit the whole time. It was pretty hilarious. They had uh, some fun scenes when uh, Thor, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot went to go get Thor's new weapon, the Stormbringer, to fight Thanos. Uh, Josh Brolin did an awesome job as Thanos. And it just had a a roll to it that I did not see coming. And it was just so beautifully done. I can't wait for the next Avengers movie and other Marvel movies so we can continue the storyline to see more. His goals for what he was doing are very kind of sympathetic. He already saw the fall of his own world because they wouldn't listen to him. He... uh, So he's trying to do that for the whole universe by killing half of them. So there will be peace and balance in the universe because there isn't supposed to be give. There's always supposed to be give and take death and rebirth. And that's what Galactus is in the uh, Marvel comic universe, that he is this being that regulates that balance. So it's unknown if, the Fox merger goes down if they'll reintroduce Galactus at some point or who knows what will happen with that. We got to see a lot of cool actors in different roles. Like we saw uh, Peter Dinklage playing the giant uh, goblin who worked at the forge that made Mjolnir and the Stormbringer and uh, a few other cool trinkets here and there, which was really funny to see him play that role he did an awesome job like always uh we got to see more of conda uh really awesome fight scenes near the end uh hilarious back and forth between tony and peter as we saw how uh they were gonna get into the fight like uh right where the movie starts is right at the end of thor ragnarok where you see uh, Thanos find the Asgardians and then it, from there we get Earth where uh, Bruce crash lands into the Sanctum Sanctorum they tell him what's going on they contact Tony Stark Tony is a little skeptical to believe everything because you know magic so he keeps referring to and insulting uh, Stephen Strange which is really funny they're ha- uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Benjamin Cumberbatch just have a wonderful uh, back and forth banter that is just funny to watch and when Spider-Man shows up it gets even more funny uh, how he gets the iron spider suit is really cool and they did something really different with it that most fans who know Iron Spider would get um, uh, they gave him four of the robotic legs instead of three. Normally it's three, but they went with the superior version where it has four legs so he can do more movability and do certain things. And there is just a lot of crazy funness. Like if I had the money, I would see this so many times, but unfortunately there's other things I got to do this summer. It was a wonderful kickoff to the summer movie season. And it's a good sign of what's to come, but, I'm having a hard time believing that any movie this summer will come anywhere closest to this. Now I'm going to say 
bye to uh, anyone who doesn't want to go past this point because this point will be spoilers. I will be going into detail about things that I like that happened and it will ruin some things for you. And for others, they might want to hear this spoiler version to decide if they really want to go see this because, as you can tell, I'm a Marvel fanboy. I got my Star-Lord and Baby Groot shirt on. And it's definitely worth all the money to go see it. Like, I'm already predicting they're going to be making Black Panther box office records with this movie. Which will be phenomenal. So, keep on keeping on with you guys. Now on with the spoiler review. You have been warned. In it we see... Thanos killing and his Black Order uh, killing all of the Asgardians. We didn't get to see Krag or the others aliens that were on the ship, so I'm assuming they were killed off screen, which is sad because I really liked those aliens. I th- thought they were hilarious. It's sad that we won't see them go forward from there, that they're just killed off screen. Which is understandable, too, because they don't really have that much budget for stuff. Um, we did not see... Uh, um, then we got to see Loki pull a fast one on Thanos. And he's like, and he pulled the classic Stark and Thor and other Avengers thing when he said, You may have an army, but we have a Hulk. And Hulk fights Thanos, and it looks like Hulk's winning, but it turns out Thanos was just letting Hulk think he was winning, and Thanos just beat down Hulk like it was nothing, and it was about to kill him, but uh, Heimdall, played by Idris Elba, was about to save him and tried to save Loki and Thor too, but unfortunately was only able to save uh, Hulk and sent him to Earth to warn the others that Thanos is coming Hulk uh, has become scared he doesn't want to come out he's never had his butt kicked like that like throughout the movie they keep showing uh, Bruce trying to get go Hulk Hulk out and stuff and Hulk keeps saying no no and not saying why and that's because he's scared it's sort of like the uh, big kid that's always never lost a fight and then that first time they lose a fight really bad and they get their butt just handed to them they become afraid to ever enter a fight again out of fear of getting hurt because yes Hulk's been hurt before but not like this not almost dying like that and that had to be terrifying for him and we saw the end of Tom Hiddleston Loki we knew this was coming because his contract was up too but him dying trying to be Loki doing Loki but for good he knew he had to stop Thanos and he tried to but Thanos just choked him out and snapped his neck then uh, murdered Heindal in front of Thor and instead of killing Thor which was his mistake he let Thor grieve as he left the ship to explode which sent him flying and crash landed into the Guardians of the Galaxy They were a little freaked out to see that he was alive and had a little fun banter here and there about how Thor is a man and Star-Lord is a dude, that his muscles are like steel and all that stuff. And it was really funny. And I wish they, I hope that they have deleted scenes of Thor explaining to the Guardians of the Galaxy that he is Thor, the god of Asgard, because Peter Quill is from Earth and he knows some of these myth so he might just think that is a myth and uh, Thor needed a new weapon a weapon that could kill Thanos and that was Stormbringer and it lo- it did its was doing its job but Thor used it incorrectly and it cost everyone dearly but I'll get to more about that later we got to see more of a uh, Spider-Man interactions. It was really hilarious when he came to save uh, uh, Tony Stark and Doctor Strange. 
And they had to go save Doctor Strange from Ebony Maw. And originally Tony Stark was going to leave him behind on Earth. Sent him the Iron Spider armor to bring him back. But luckily the Iron Spider armor had other plans and stuck around. So Peter got to go fight with uh, Doctor Strange and Tony Stark to defeat Ebony Maw. And... They defeated him with references. Yay! Because it got to the point where he just kept making references that Tony's like, okay, kid, no more references for the rest of the space trip. And they go to Titan where they plan on confronting Thanos because they know that is their only hope that doing it. And at first, Doctor Strange is against it, but he thinks about it more and more and he's like I guess this is our only option then it cuts more to uh, Scarlet Witch and the Vision they get attacked by more of Thanos' Black Order and in turn they get saved not only by Captain America but they got Black Widow, Falcon and the whole shebang and they just kick butt throughout, through and through, they get them out of there bring them back to the Avengers headquarters where they meet up with War Machine who's getting his butt handed to him by uh, General Ross, chewing him out for letting Captain America and the others in without arresting them because he still views them as traitors. They try to explain to him what it is. In the end, uh, Rhodey gets court-martialed and for disobeying orders because Rhodey knows that this is what they need to do. They need to stick together. They need to do this or else the Earth is doomed. So then they go to Wakanda to get help from T'Challa and recruit Bucky and also use T'Challa's sister to try and disconnect the and, uh, Infinity Stone, the Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone from his head so he, they could destroy it before Thanos could get to it. But unfortunately, Thanos got to the Time Stone and that was a really hilarious part where um, first one... Peter and everyone crash lands on uh, Titan because they don't know how to fly the alien spaceship. They run into the Guardians of the Galaxy who was tipped off by Nebula that Thanos and Gamora would be heading there. So when they see Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange, they assume that they're with Thanos so they start attacking with each other. And when they start shouting at, e P P at each other about Thanos, they kind of realize that they're on the same side. Then uh, Star-Lord and Iron Man get into a big uh, peeing contest with each other about who is better. Uh, basically, Star-Lord is learning that his uh, home is protected. It has these great, fantastic heroes. And he's also learning things have changed since he was there. Like, um, they talk about how Star-Lord beat uh, Ronan the Accuser with a dance-off and Peter's like, oh, like Footloose? And he's like, yeah, Footloose is a classic and he's like, no, it's not. It's not a classic. <laughs> and that just upsets Peter. <laughs> uh, Quill, that is, not Peter Parker. Peter Parker is the one that insulted Peter Quill. And as uh, they get interrupted by Doctor Strange who has been using the Time Stone to look through over... 11 million different possibilities comes up with one that looks like it's their best outcome and tries to take them both down to take down Thanos and they set up a pretty decent trap but unfortunately Star-Lord gets distracted when he finds out Thanos had to kill Gamora to get the soul gem that her soul is now trapped in the soul gem just like it was in the comics. So it's going to be interesting if she's going to be freed from there or what's going to be the case. Um, they also had a really neat scene where they showed uh, Thanos and Gamora going to the planet where the soul gem was and they found the soul gem's protector, the Red Skull. It's where he was sent when he touched the, the Tesseract and was transported where it looked like he dissolved and died. He wasn't. He was sent through space and he was forced to become its protector because he was going to abuse the stones for his own evil purposes and it was his fate in life. 
It was kind of sad, but also really fitting for him. And it was a really nice, surprising cameo I did not see coming. It was fantastic. You have to see more of Bucky's new arm, which it looks from the looks of it, it's made out of completely vibranium. The Avengers were kicking butt, and they had some moments where it looked like they were on the ropes, and they had some really awesome fight scenes, like uh, uh, I forget her name in the comics and movie, but she played Michonne in The Walking Dead, and she was in Black Panther as the head of T'Challa's guard, where her and uh, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow teamed up and they just dominated it and it was really awesome to see and there was a really funny scene where uh wanda starts panicking and she sees they need help so she leaves the vision side because she was staying with the vision until the stone could be removed and then she was to destroy it but she needed to go help them went out into the battlefield and was just decimating things left and right and they're like why was she in the background again why wasn't she up front we, and when Thor got his Stormbringer, which unfortunately he was dying because the way he had to help make it, because he had to hold open the gate to let the star that, to forge it happen. But unfortunately, that meant he had to pass through the energy and he was dying because he took too much energy into him. And they needed to act fast, so Groot seeing this happened, broke off his own arm and used that to attach and create Thor's Stormbringer and healing him. And they used the energy to create a Bifrost bridge to Midgar, to Wakanda, to fight uh, Thanos' army. And they were dominating left and right. They had fun scenes where Rocket Raccoon and Winter Soldier were teaming up and Rocket already deciding he was going to steal... Bucky's a vibranium arm and his gun because he liked them. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I got to see Teen Groot dominating with uh, Killer Force, and it was really awesome to see that. But unfortunately, this movie does not have a happy ending. It has a cliffhanger. It shows Thanos winning. He defeats the... when. He, all of his Black Order has been killed off. He finally shows up after he's gotten the Time Stone. He destroys Vision to get the Mind Stone. He quickly defeats them all. And when he got all the power and he's about to do his ultimate thing, that's when Thor comes in and he attacks and attacks. And it looks like he's winning. But he missed. He would have killed Thanos if he aimed for his head. But instead he aimed for his body. And destroyed part of the Infinity Gauntlet. But Thanos is still successful and destroyed half the universe. So they showed people just disintegrating out of existence. Like um, there was a really heartbreaking scene where uh, Peter dissolved into nothingness. And uh, Tony Stark's arms as he was crying and dealing with that. The Guardians of the Galaxy all disappeared. Baby Teen Groot disappeared in front of rocket and he cried uh bucky disappeared um war machine disappeared wanda disappeared crying over vision's dead body and there and uh t'challa also disappeared and that unfortunately is where the movie ends they have one end credit scene that shows uh samuel jackson's nick fury driving around with uh uh, Maria Hill, they're noticing all the spaceships popping up. And then they start noticing all these accidents happening and people are disappearing. Nick sees Maria Hill just vanish before his eyes. He panics, grabs this device in his trunk, and he's making a call. But unfortunately, he starts disagreeing and he's like, Mother! And he gets cut off as he's about to say the full phrase of that. And as the communication device falls, it shows the symbol for Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, which her movie's coming out next year. So it's connecting to show uh, her to set up that. So it's obviously she will have something to do with Thanos and Avengers 4. They're going to have her come in and be a badass. They did not show uh, Hawkeye or Ant-Man. So it could be there somewhere else. 
who knows that uh, we also know that they were dealing with their own stuff in Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was supposedly going around at the same time. So we'll probably find out more this summer when Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out. I highly recommend this movie. You will have a good time no matter what your preference is. It was very emotional, and I teared up a little bit in parts here and there. It was a laugh riot, too, and just a fun roller coaster of emotions. Check it out this weekend and have fun, and that's it for today's show, so keep on keeping on.